So on, on Thursday night, I had wing stop. Like, I was, like, just shitting my pants, like, the whole night and stuff. Like, r- really affected my sleep. And I had to go work the next day in Manhattan. And I'm just, like, driving there, like, fuck, dude. I'm, like, so out of it. And I have to work there. And it was a stressful day. And I thought I was only going to be working for six hours. But I had worked for eight and a half hours. And I was just, like, suffering along and just in a bad mood, kind yeah. of. And yeah. Then, but then, like, I come home and we go see Operation Fortune. Rusta Gire, directed by the king, Guy Ritchie. And we see that at 10 p.m. We go to the theater, and the theater is completely empty. No one's there. No one's excited for this movie. We've been following this movie, though. Yeah, yeah. Like, it was supposed to come out a year ago. But because of the war in Ukraine, and they have Ukrainian gangsters in the movie, yeah. it was pushed back, and I guess maybe didn't test well with audiences or something. I don't, I don't know. I, don't ever, I, never, I never read about the testing with audience thing, but I think the Ukrainian war definitely stifled its momentum and promotion and stuff to like push it back. And I think the fact that like we just heard about the release mm-hmm. like a week or two or a week and a half ago, like, oh, it's going to be released, and there's like literally no promotion behind it, besides like on Guy Ritchie's Instagram, it's, like promoting it and stuff. Yeah, they pushed it back, and I think it just lost a lot of its potential compared to, like, having it be advertised, you know, because mm-hmm. you got, like, some stars in it, you know? I mean, you got Jason Statham, which mm-hmm. is, like, a box office draw, like, Abby Plaza, you know, she's more, like, kind of indie. You wouldn't, like, count on her for a box office, but especially Jason Statham, you got Hugh Grant, and then Josh Hartnett, who's not really, like, a leading guy. Like, I don't really know what he's been in, like, that's, like, leading, but... He, he was in, like, was he a Black Hawk Down and like, that era of... Yeah, uh, like, he was in some other shit. I forgot what it was, but anyway, like the, 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 it's really Jason Statham, Guy Ritchie action movie, Mm -hmm. you know, spy type like draw. That's like the whole draw of the, of, you know, the marketing. It's a shame that like not more people saw this because I'm a huge Guy Ritchie fan and you know, like I love his action movies. When he's on, he's on. It had a good story. It was funny. It had like Guy Ritchie-isms in it. You could tell it was from him and it was a fun time. I wish it had been advertised more, and if they had more time and more money, they probably could have, but they kind of just snuck it under the rug here. Yeah, well, I think they had money because it was a $50 million budget, Mm -hmm. and it opened in the UK and Europe in, like, the beginning of January, I think. Okay. And then it opened here this past weekend, but it's made, like, $30 million against a 50 budget. Mm -hmm. So, technically, it's a flop, you know? But is it a flop when it comes to the film? No. Because the film, yeah. I would say no. Definitely not. I had a good time. Mm -hmm. Listen, there's definitely times where the movie fell flat. He wasn't at his full potential. It wasn't like Lock, Stock, Snatch, or The Gentleman. Can you give give us a little plot? So, Operation Fortune, Rustagire. That's how you pronounce it? I think so. Follows Jason Statham, who plays Orson Fortune, who is a Secret Service agent for... Uh, Britain? Special ops badass guy that Jason Statham can play. What, what you expect from him, yeah. essentially. He's playing himself. Mm-hmm. But he's he's not the most reliable special ops dude. Because uh-huh. when we find him, he's pretty much, what, like self-medicated on wine or something? Good wine. Good wine. Like yeah, only good wine. The good shit. Yeah. 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 And then um, it's about this object was stolen. And of course... Orson and his team, Aubrey Plaza, uh, the guy who plays JJ. I don't know him. Bugsy Malone. He was really good. I really liked yeah, him. he's in The Gentleman. Oh, yeah? He's Is he rapper. one of the boxers? Yeah, yeah. He's one of the he's boxer so rapper. He's like, it, on the foot, on it, on it, on it. <laughs> yeah, that part was good. He was like really, he killed it in this. Yeah. And then Aubrey Plaza is like some coder or something that was like an addition to their team. They don't really know her, but mm. they grow to like her a lot. And they have to get this um, object back, and they don't know what it is, and they don't know who stole it. They just know that there's a big sale happening in Cannes, and that's where Hugh Grant comes in. He's trying to sell this object, and he's this, like, billionaire evil villain, but he's hilarious. And his one kryptonite is he's obsessed with this movie actor Mm. who's played by Josh Hartnett. Yeah. And this movie actor, Josh Hartnett, plays such an asshole, and he plays it so well, Mm -hmm. and Hugh Grant... Is so fucking funny in this movie, dude. If you liked him in The Gentleman, you're gonna love him in this movie. Yeah, he's just good in general. Like Hugh Grant is is great, but basically they have to hire. They have some dirt on this big movie star who's like a real like a fucking douchebag, like jerk, 
yeah. movie star guy, super famous. And they use that dirt to blackmail him in order to bring him on this mission where he needs to play himself in order to get closer into this, basically this uh, arms dealer, this war arms dealer. Like this billionaire arms dealer is like a fan of him. So he has to like go in and befriend him and then to like seduce him on a personal level so they can like find the information about like some, some arms deal. Yeah. Josh Hartnett is, like I said, I think he was, he was channeling, like this is like what I feel like chris evans is like in real life you think chris evans yeah i think chris evans is like this like douchebag like only can play himself in like real life like that's when i thought when i saw him i was like dude this is definitely what chris evans is like in real life he's probably like a this like douchebag that's like who came to mind for sure for me it was tom cruise i know guy Ritchie and tom cruise are friends so i don't think it was tom cruise but just when Don Francesco is like, I'm going to do my own stunts. And he's like yelling at people on set. I'm like, oh, like Tom Cruise. That's kind of like Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Uh, but he's like younger, you know, like he's more in that Chris Evans age range. Yeah, Tom Don Cruise Francesco is, is probably like 30, 35. Yeah. Plus, Tom Cruise pushing is pushing 40. He's like deceiving though, Tom Cruise, because he looks so young, but he's so old. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's like the magic of the movies. The real highlight of one of the highlights of the film is Hugh Grant. Mm -hmm. like Hugh Grant is so yeah he's definitely so funny he's so witty the dialogue in this especially when his scenes like really hit like the dialogue is good in this through and through but what with Hugh Grant he's just like on like he's just on it and uh, he's probably is my favorite part of the movie mm -hmm. and just like in The Gentleman he's like also kind of like one of the best parts of The Gentleman too just the dialogue and the shit that he says and like this like subtle gayness about him <laughs> too that he, he does like both in both movies yeah because he's just such a man crush on this guy mm -hmm. um like the plot it's kind of like you know average run-of-the-mill sort of like kind of spy shit it's not anything they're not reinventing anything when it comes to like a plotting of this film and I, I kind of like didn't really know like i had a general idea kind of what it was about like they're going to infiltrate this guy but when it came to the details of the mission and what they were supposed to be like extracting or whatever like i was a little bit fuzzy and i kind of Mm -hmm. tuned out a little bit it's basic in that aspect and then there are stylistic richieisms in it but i felt like he could have done there could have been more like it's not on those levels of like rock and roll like snatch like gentlemen it's 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 a little bit toned down it's a little a little commercially a little bit and the way it's shot is it's not the best shot guy Ritchie picture we've seen in style wise it's kind of a little bit basic operations with the shooting stuff and then we can also I want you to talk about the fight scenes, too. Yeah, the fight scenes were really lackluster for me. It's just, like, Jason Statham throwing his arm at someone and never, like, he never moves. He just walks at him and punches him. Yeah. And that, to me, was like, okay, it just definitely wasn't the highlight of the movie. No. Like you said, Hugh Grant was the highlight of the movie. I turned on, like, every time he was on screen. There were definitely parts where I, like, tuned out. Of the movie. Yeah, there was other times so like kind of because I also like I said I was kind of dealing with this food poisoning and tired and stuff from a stressful day. Like I wish I could have maybe pay attention more. I would have maybe had a better time. But there are like cool sections where he does some like Scorsese shit with like the mute like the raindrops sequence. Oh, that like, was robbing. really good. Yeah, that's like very Scorsese, and he does some split screen stuff. He does some sort of elliptical editing where we see something like we we're, we think we're going to see an action scene. Mm -hmm. like, part we think we're going to see an action scene, and then. It just cuts to him, like, leaving this fortress. Yeah. And then you're like, what the fuck happened? And then it goes back, and we mm -hmm. see it, like, happen, like, over time. And then the parts we've seen, it skips. It's, like, a cool little Guy Ritchie elliptical thing that he, he's done before in other films. And mm -hmm. It's really, like, what makes him stand out to me as, like, a storyteller is, is that sort of style. And he does it in, like, Man from Uncle and mm -hmm. Snatch and, like, Lockstock. And, Rock and Roller. That's and, and he does it in, um, he does it in The Gentleman, too. Oh, yeah. That's right. Like a lot of things where it's like, oh, this person got robbed and we don't know who robbed him. And so it's all like the circle around and you mm -hmm. know, we have Colin Farrell. And yeah. Yeah. I just, yeah. That's really why I like to go see a Guy Ritchie movie. I'm not going to like this plot. It's not enough for me to go see a plot if it's directed by some like hack Hollywood guy, you know, mm -hmm. like I go to a Guy Ritchie movie because I want to see that sauce. I want that Guy Ritchie sauce. I want that flavor. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's like, I get inspired by that. Yeah, definitely. He, he inspires me so much. Every time I see his movie, I know even if it's a flop, he's going to have, you said like his Guy Ritchie-isms in it. Yeah. And I'm going to have a fun time. Yeah. 
And that's what's important to me. I always felt like when I watch his movies, he's not trying to be anything other than himself. And he makes it really fun. Like his dialogue is so good. It's so snappy and witty. And his jokes when they hit, like really hit. Yeah. His personality seeps into the picture. I think you could say that. His personality seeps into the picture. Like the way that people like talk and act and dress. Yeah. For sure. Like he has a dress code (laughs) in all of his movies. He definitely does. Like he styles them himself. His love for chess comes out. Yeah. His love for wine comes out. Yeah. His love for grills <laughs> come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, every picture he does, like, some some part of him and what's going on in his life seeps into it. And I respect that. I think that's cool to, like, not shy away from putting yourself into your writing. Yeah. That, no, definitely. Like, his philosophy comes out in it, too, you know, mm-hmm. as well. Bruce Aguirre is a fun time. I, I'd, I'd watch it again, because... Like we, you know, we're big Guy Ritchie fans here. Like we're actually really big Guy Ritchie fans. Like I've seen all of his movies except for The Beach or whatever, The Getaway with Madonna or something like that. That yeah. one, but I heard that that's like a really bad movie. I, yeah, the, people definitely say it's his worst one. I yeah. that's the one I haven't seen either. Yeah, and no, I haven't seen Wrath of Man as oh, well. Shit. But I want to see that because that's like, you yeah, know. we gotta watch that one's cool. That one's cool. That one's sick. Mm-hmm. That's like his heat, kind of. But. You feel like there's better action scenes with Jason Statham in that than this. I think Wrath of Man has more of the juice sauce of Guy Ritchie, mm-hmm. and it's more concise with the story, and there's just some cool edits in there. And Fortune is more ostentation, ostentatious and like flamboyant and stuff. But honestly, I don't know which one I actually would like more. They're kind of maybe on the same level because Jason Statham is doing his thing and. But also you got Hugh Grant. Yeah. And shit. Oh, no, I haven't seen Aladdin, actually. I haven't seen Aladdin. I saw Aladdin. It's yeah. That good. Aubrey Plaza, I thought she was, like, pretty good in this. I thought she was pretty funny. Yeah. She's fine. She's good. Like, she's she's funny and stuff. He's very patronizing in this. She's sassy, patronizing, kind of snarky mm-hmm. in Definitely. this. And that, I feel that's like that's her. just who... Yeah, it is just her. I guess she's playing a characterization of someone, but not necessarily playing a character that's like outside of her range. Because mm-hmm. she just kind of plays those really sassy, sarcastic, yeah, darling, yeah, darling, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's been on a roll for a while. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm a big fan of her. I think she's like on a huge come up right now, mm-hmm. especially in White Lotus and other movies she's done recently. Really like coming into her own as an actress. Yeah. One thing I would say about the movie, though, is I feel like near the end of the story, they rely a little too heavily on the plot and what's happening. And that's, like we said, the weakest aspect of the film. And, and the action go, was like, OK. Yeah. When, when, you, when you go to the end, though, and, and like suddenly the bad guy is like this cardboard box guy, mm-hmm. you know, of a character... It kind of falls flat at the end a little bit for mm-hmm. me personally. Mm-hmm. Uh, didn't take away from my enjoyment of the film, but that's like a little something that I had a critique of. Yeah, he, he kind of has a commentary on, I guess, war and like tech too. Like a subtle little mm-hmm. commentary he kind of throws in there, He's, which is kind of cool. It kind of reflects our times. Yeah, which I'm excited for his next one. Oh, yeah. In, oh, even yeah. though... We gotta watch, we're going to watch Covenant. Yeah, so yeah. Covenant comes out in a month. Yeah, it does. About in a month, which is crazy. Like, pretty lucky this year that we get two Guy Ritchie movies. Yeah, yeah. It seems a little more serious, though. It it really when I saw the well, trailer, the trailer, yeah. It doesn't really have that Guy Ritchieism that I expect and want in his films. But I know he branches off to other things a lot. Um, yeah, when he when he commits to do more of a serious war picture, tonally, he's going to probably be more serious. When he does something about, like, a secret agent, it's going to be, like, classy James Bond type shit, so you're going to get more, like, clips and more, like, fun, you know? Yeah. Whereas, like, with a war movie, I'm, I, I don't know, I don't know. I've never, I haven't even seen the trailer yeah. before they come out of nothing. But I am excited no for Jake Gyllenhaal and Guy Ritchie collaboration. Like, yeah. that's something I think is going to be really cool, and yeah. I, I like both of them a lot, mm-hmm. so. Yeah, it's cool that Guy Ritchie is doing, like, more movies now. Like, mm-hmm. he's trying to do a movie every year. Yeah. You know? And he's trying to do what he finds interesting, yeah. which is like something I really respect. He's not worried about what other people think of it. He's worried about like what he wants to do. 
Mm -hmm. And I respect the hell out of that. Operation Fortune is a top tier guy, Richie. Like it's not on that level of like a gentleman. Or, it's kind of like middle. It's like mid tier guy, Richie. It is mid tier, but even mid tier guy, Richie for me, I'll watch because I like guy Richie. Yeah, it's kind of like Man from Uncle. Very much so. If you like Man from Uncle, you like this. You just yeah. I wish there was a little bit more style in it, a little bit more flair. That's mm -hmm. all I'm saying. And any real Guy Ritchie plot is going to be kind of basic, but it's like what he brings to the table that makes it special and unique. Yeah. I think he's also could be very technical of a director, yeah. which I think is cool. Um, some of the shots, like crane shots, were really, really cool. Yeah. His dialogue is good. Yeah. Ain't half an odd bastard. <laughs> what would you say is your favorite Guy Ritchie movie? Lockstock, Snatch, and... The gentleman, yeah, yeah, and those can like switch in and out. Like gentlemen, like they all can like flip. But Lockstock is really the cool, gritty British one. Mm -hmm. It's not just like so fucking. That's just like steroids, Lockstock. Yeah, it is. Know? It feels like they're in the same universe. Yeah. All three of them. It's like Brad. They just threw in Brad Pitt's character for because they needed like the promotion. To yeah, because he's not even like supposed to be that guy. It's like a Colin Farrell type character. Yeah, and he's like they're taking the mo the least British person, the, the the least British actor, to play like the most niche British yeah. person you can you can do. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's something that like maybe it has a little I have a little thing about it for, but it's still good. But he still plays the character well, yeah. and those gypsies like, I love them. Yeah. They're like such good characters in yeah, the, the Guy Ritchie universe. Yeah. He, those are like ensemble pieces, like Lockstock, Snatch, Rock and Roll. Uh, definitely the those difference. are like m different stories kind of moving in and out. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know the last time he really did that. I mean, yeah, Rock and Roll, uh, and then everything else is kind of more like you following kind of single character or two people with the same mission. In Gentlemen, I feel like they kind of m they meet you halfway where you really are following McConaughey. Yeah, you're following McConaughey most of the time. But then there's like other little storylines throughout mm. where you feel like they're going to lead somewhere, but then it ends with McConaughey. But I do like that they have Colin Farrell in it. They have Charlie um, Hunnam and the Hugh Grant's character. I love when he like is able to really branch out and create these like crazy characters for everyone. Because that's what makes like a fun Guy Ritchie movie. Yeah, for real. But Operation Fortune Rooster Gear is really straightforward. Yeah, I'd probably give it three and a half on Letterboxd. Yeah, I'd say that's fair. I was going to ask you what you're going to rate it. I think I'd give it three and a half as well. Maybe four could be argued, but probably, probably not. 